Shalom, brothers and sisters. All honor and glory and praise goes to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of our King, Yahusha HaMashiach. I'm Brother Jedaniah, and brothers and sisters, my name means beloved of the Most High, peaceful of the Most High, and that is my persona. But brothers and sisters, I want to read the book of Habakkuk. I think I said that right. <laughs> chapter 1. And this here chapter is very important to understand. Zion, I'll talk to you of the 12 tribes of Yahshua, or as some call, 12 tribes of Israel. This is for your understanding and your edification of what the people would look like in these end times that would have rule over you and the world. And the Most High has given us insight into these last days that we may know the day of the hour. Um, not know the day and the hour that the Most High will send His Son, but we will know the time and the season that His Son uh, would be coming. So no man knows the day or the hour, but we would know the season that we may not be caught as a as a uh, being caught by a thief in the night. So let's start right here, and I'm going to show you something else in another book from the Dead Sea Scrolls discovered when I get to that portion. So hang tight with me. Verse 1. The book which Habakkuk the prophet did see, O Yahweh, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Now this is, you have to look at this in a perspective of a people in captivity. This is from the prophet Habakkuk, the prophet of the Most High, and he's speaking on behalf of Zion. He's not speaking on behalf of any other nation right now. He's talking on behalf of Zion, and this is to Zion. And when you look at it from that perspective, you can see clearly what's going on in this chapter. O Yahweh, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. So here we are in these end times, crying out for the violence against us, and we're not being saved. Verse 3, Why dost thou show me inequity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, and therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. So, since the wicked is in rule over the whole earth, wrong judgment has been gone out over the meek, the humble, the righteous, the poor. Verse 5, Behold, you among the heathen. Now, this is another foretelling sign that he's talking to Zion, who was scattered in all nations among the heathen. Behold, you among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelous, marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which you will not believe, though it be told you. So, a lot of people read this book and they don't believe what's written in it, the judgments, the prophecies, the end time prophecies, they don't believe it, though it be told to them. 
verse 6. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Now, who is this really talking about? Now, if you go by this, you'll think of the original Chaldeans uh, back in the day and their land who were actually Shemites, dark-skinned people. But this is not talking about that. We have another clue right here. And for sure, Habakkuk 1 and, 1 and 6. This is from one of the Dead Sea Scrolls that was discovered in the, in the caves called the War Scrolls. And this tells a little bit more of that same verse. Here it is. For behold, I rouse the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation interpreted. This concerns the Chittim, who is the Romans, who are quick and valiant in war, causing many to perish. All the world shall fall under the dominion of the Chittim, the Romans, and the wicked shall not believe in the laws of Yahweh. And what church rose up from Roman, from Rome? And y'all think the book of Romans is talking to them? It's about them? I don't think so. So, this, this people here is, um, Chittim. And I'm going to read an excerpt from the book of Jasher, chapter 90. Just one second. Book of Jasher. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Here we go. Chapter 90, verse 30. He then heard that Edom had revolted from under the hand of Chittim. Now Chittim of one of the children of uh, Japheth. And Latinus went to them and smote them and subdued them and placed them under the hand of the children of Chittim. And Edom became one kingdom with the children of Chittim all the days. Now there was a back and forth rulership if you read the book of Jasher chapter 60 through uh, 90 there was like a back and forth rulership like the children of Chittim ruled over the children of Edom the children of Edom ruled over the children of Chittim and eventually they became one nation so the Romans are indeed comprised of Edom and a lot of people don't understand where the Edomites went they went they went to Europe and they took on the names of Japheth Japheth's lineage some of them even claim to be Greeks Spaniards Germans French Belgian all up in those areas Chittim is there. I mean, Esau is there. And this is how you got Esau being the end of the world. If you read in um, the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 9 says, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So, we're in this war, Zion, with the children of Chittim, and their works do follow them. Let's go up here to... Show you something else right here. Defining the sons of darkness 
the army of B, Leal, whom we used to worship and still do worship to this day. Eden, Moab, it's the Chinese, it's the Edomites. These are the some of the white folks that you see in Europe. A whole lot of them, actually. Moab, China, sons of Ammon, Japanese. Now, let's not forget about the other children of Moab and Ammon spread out into the Philippines, North and South Korea, Vietnam, Vietnam of course, Taiwan, and uh, the surrounding areas. They have, that's them. Sons of the East, Amalekites, which of course Amalek is a part of Edom. The Philistines, that's some Hamites, bands of Chittim, and that's some more Edomites, and Japheth, together, right here. All right, let's go back to over here, verse 7. Habakkuk. Chapter 1, verse 7. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Now this is the final kingdom. The final kingdom that will be would break in pieces, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. The Roman Empire ran by Edom. This is the rider on the white horse. The son of destruction is Edom. Everybody waiting for that son of destruction to be revealed. It's, he has been revealed. We just didn't know it till recent times that he was the son of destruction. Edom is the leader and the head of the snake, the head of the serpent. And he has his body with him. Verse 7 again. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteneth to eat. And in the book of the Apocrypha chapter I mean, uh, Second Ezra, chapter fifteen. It also talks about the judgment of Babylon, and it talks about the eagle up in here as well. You really need to read uh, First and Second Ezra, and also First and Second Maccabees. To get a true understanding of this final kingdom and what the things they will be doing. This final dreadful kingdom. They follow this. This being right here. This is who they follow. Let me pull up something. Uh, let me see. Here we go. This is who they follow. This is their deity. This is their Antichrist. This is their Savior right here. Son of this person. And it's time for us to wake up because you have been deceived, Zion. And not only Zion. In the script it says that. Oh. Um, that they would wake up. When after the Messiah returned, and then they will discover that they have been told lies. Now let's get back into this. 
Their horses also are swifter. Well, I read that. Verse 9. They shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. And they shall gather the captivity as the sand. Here's another key right here. They came from they come for violence. They shall gather the captivity as sand. Who went in into captivity as a whole nation of people? As the sands of the sea. How many of us were gathered? It was millions of us gathered. They shall gather the captivity as the sands of the sea. And this brings me back to Joel chapter 2 where it talks about uh, where the Hamites sold us to the Grecians. See how all this is falling together? Here little, there little. Verse 10. And they shall scoff at the kings and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold. Remember in Daniel it talks about they shall break in pieces. That final kingdom will be strong as iron and they will break in pieces. They have broken pieces every single nation out there. And they'll continue to break in pieces. For they shall heat dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over an offense, imputing this his power unto his deity. Imputing his power. Because remember, the power was given to them by the beast. The beast gave them the power, the seat, and authority to do all that they're doing. And the most I allowed them to ride out is the, rock, the rider on the white horse to conquer. The Most High gave them a great sword. This here also goes right along with, um, I don't want to lose my place. Well, you know what I can just come back to is, let's go to Genesis chapter 20, 27. Let's look at the promises of Esau. Here it is. Therefore Yahweh give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Oh, wait a minute. That's the wrong one. <laughs> Here we go. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by the sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Now, he was promised to have dominion and to be the end of the world. And right here it was promised of the fatness of the earth, which means he would own all the land. And right now they own all the land. They own all the land. And by the sword he shall live. He will be always be at war. They worship the deity of war. And let me Go back one more. Here we go. Book of Enoch. Let's see. 69. Where you at? Is that 69? No, that's 80. Six. I'm trying to get this right. Seven nine. 
버립니다. 어, oh, yeah, I'm tripping. I know it's around us somewhere. Okay, I found it. Book of Enoch, chapter 69, verse 6. And this is who they worship. And this is talking about the fallen angels, by the way. And the third was named God Riel. So that little hyphen right there, that tells you how to pronounce that. He it is who showed the children of men all the blows of death. Remember, they worship the God of war. The blows of death, and he led astray Eve. This is the same entity that led Eve astray in the garden. And he showed the weapons of death to the sons of men the shield and the coat of mail and the sword for battle and all the weapons of death to the children of men and from his hand they have proceeded against those who dwell on the earth from that day and forevermore so these children of this entity will forevermore Come after the children of men with the sword. That's the reason why they cannot have peace on earth. They can't just live with people. They got to be at war with somebody. And they will be against the inhabitants of the earth forever. They belong to this entity who is the deity of war. And that's who they worship. Now let's go back to where it was. Oh. Dang. <laughs> All right. Let's start over here. Click on here. Have a cook. Oh, that's right. One and where was I? Is that ten? Yeah. Now keep that in mind, who they actually serve. And when you keep that in mind, when you read the scriptures, you can figure out what's exactly going on while you read. And they shall scoff at the kings and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold, but they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over the fan, imputing this his power unto his deity. Art thou not from everlasting, O Yahweh, my Elohim, mine holy one? We shall not die, O Yahweh. Thou hast ordained them for judgment. These people are ordained for judgment. You understand? Judgment is going to come to them. They, they don't think it at all. Because they think they're covered by their their deity, their antichrist deity, which turns you away from the laws of the Most High. And Almighty Yahweh, thou hast established them for correction. They were established for our correction, Zion. Didn't the Most High say he would turn you into a cruel nation's hands? Well, that was for our correction. For us to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, and not follow the ways of the heathen, all these other heathen nations. Go back over here. Uh, right here it says, For the instructor, the rule of the war, the first attack of the sons of light shall be undertaken against the forces of sons of darkness. The Omer B. Lao. The troops of Edom, Moab, the sons of Ammon, the Amalekites, Philistia, and the troops of the Kittim of Ashur. That's the Romans, who is also mixed with Japheth. Supporting them are those who have violated the covenant. Now, who is these other nations? That's all the other nations that worship all these other gods and deities and idols and people and 
in places, they violate the covenant and they are supporting them. Even our own people of Zion is supporting these people because they are in violation of the covenant. Uh, there's something else. Yeah, we know this one here. There was something else down here pertaining to it. the covenant that I read not too long ago. Here it is. Concerning what the coming of Melchizedek, concerning what scripture says, how long will you judge unjustly and show partiality with the wicked? Selah. The interpretation applies to Baliel and the spirits predestined to them because all of them have rebelled, turning from Yah's precepts, that's his laws, and so becoming utterly wicked. And a lot of them think they're so righteous, so pure, walking around here doing the things that they do, saying they're in their Christ, start, you know, they're in JC. And they don't even know that they're the wicked. They've been given over to a grand delusion. Let's go on. Let's finish this. Now remember, they were ordained for judgment and established for correction. Correction for the righteous, the elect, the holy. Verse 13. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on inequity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue, when the wicked devour the men, the man, the man, that is more righteous than he, and make us men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them. They take up all of them with the angle, the hook. They catch them in their net and gather them in their drag. Therefore they rejoice and are glad. Therefore they, they sacrifice unto their net and burn incense unto their drag, because by them their portion is fat. Remember Esau when at the fat of the land? Their portion is fat and their meat plenteous. Shall they therefore empty their net and not spare continually to slay the nations? So who was going around slaying all the nations? Colonizing. Who was everywhere they go? Kill, steal, destroy, lie, distort, bring confusion, take away people's cultures, history change them to benefit themselves. They they changed so much stuff and laid claim to so much stuff in the past to themselves. It's a shame. So much darkness. Everything is backwards here. And it's up to you to recognize who is the rider on the white horse that went out to conquer. It's plain as day. The Most High has been telling you throughout the scriptures, you have to wake up and believe it. And if you are part of that nation that rode out on a white horse, you got a lot of repenting to do. And if you're a Vesar, the Most High don't like you. Let's go right there. Oops, wrong chapter. <laughs> yeah, it's the right chapter. Verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now, why does the Most High hate Esau? Because he's the son of destruction. And he indeed will go into captivity and slavery when this is all over. He, the remnant of him will go into captivity and slavery and they was promised to be completely wiped off, wiped out. None of them will enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
including the Philistines, who used to always have no mercy on us, and there was another nation as well. That was, oh, the Canaanites, was promised to be wiped out and will not inherit the kingdom at all. Their nation of people will not be there at all. The Edomites, the uh, Philistines, and the Canaanites. So uh, I pray that y'all got a better understanding. Keep reading the scriptures. Read all the other books. You have never heard of the, the War Scrolls? Look it up and read it and get understanding these people that's right here right below Edom which the kingdom of Edom is right now standing and spawned forth from Europe right next to them is Moab Asians the Asian people who's risen up and rising up you can read about them as well in the book of 2nd Esdras chapter 15 and 16 about both of them talks about them and their kingdom and here you have the sons of Ammon helping both of them even though they be fighting sometimes these two be fighting but they're still family all of them are family right here the children of Chittim which is with Javan and has taken over the names of Javan and y'all need to get an understanding of this. The bands of Chittim is mixed with Japheth. Uh, let me go here real quick. Let's see. The sons of Japheth, here's Javan, the Greeks, here's Chittim, Kittim, the Romans. Of course, you got the Ashkenazi, which is, see, a lot of people are thinking that a lot of those Ashkenazi Jews is of Japheth, but they don't understand that Esau is in this mixture of Ashkenazi. Esau disappeared into Japheth because Japheth was promised to have his tents enlarged. I can't quite remember where I saw that at right off the top. But y'all can look Google that and uh and find that. Well let me type it up. Tents enlarged. I don't know if I'm going to find that. Okay. Not exactly find it right up right off the bat, but that's okay. You can find it where Japheth's tents was promised to be enlarged. So with that, brothers and sisters, pray you got an understanding. Share this video. Hit the like button. Definitely leave me a comment what you think about this video. And it's okay to let me know I'm doing an okay job. Because I know I'll be messing up sometimes when I'm trying to explain this. I'm doing the best I can. So with that, I'm going to say shalom.